Hi, I'm Craig Leibuse with Sherline Products here in Vista, California. Today we're going to show you how to unpack a Sherline lathe. I have to have a 4400, the long bed model. Both the small one and the long one are, are unpacked the same way. We're also including now a backlash adjustment on the cross slide, which is something new. So we'll go into a little detail on how you set that up and adjust it. Uh, once you flip the tape on the box and open it up, this is what you're going to get. Your instruction manual from there will take out some of the packing material. Uh, the uh, other parts are held in place by the uh, by the tailstock, so you uh, turn the hand wheel to release the uh, pressure on them, and then you can remove the boxes. This is your spare parts. This is your uh, motor and speed control here, uh, and headstock. This is some packing material. So what you have when you're done there is uh, we're down to that. Oh, we have some uh, the belts, belt guards too. So this is how the lathe is packed. Easiest way to get it out of there is probably to just turn the box over, and uh, you could. Uh, I'm not going to slip the box, uh, but you could slip the box and just push it out, or you can raise this up and let gravity get it out for you. Okay, I've raised the box up. We're going to lift that off the bottom on the side. The lathe then is contained in these two pieces of uh, cardboard, which are folded over to keep it into the box. And in, uh, behind this one here is where your head or your uh, saddle is, is stored. So don't, don't miss that. We're going to be putting that on in a second. The lathe is held on to the wooden base. This is to protect it during shipping. It's held on by two screws. And your um, hex keys, uh, there's a hex key needed to remove the, the screw from the bottom. They're included in with your spare parts. You have uh, the um, bracket for the motor and your um, tool post. And here are the um, hex keys, drive dog, and, and uh, dead centers. So we'll take the hex key and we'll go underneath and loosen that screw, and then we can remove, we can remove the two uh, nuts that hold them down. Okay, I've removed the two nuts and washers on there. Now we can just lift the lathe off, off the base. What I'm going to do is, uh, just to protect the table here, we're going to uh, remove the wood and we'll just work on, the, uh, on top of the cardboard here, protect the surface of the table. So what you see now is the lathe. Um, we can loosen the, uh, the hold down screw that, that, so that you can move the uh, uh, tail sock back and forth. You notice the, the gib on the saddle is, held, is already adjusted at the factory, so they've already put it on there and made sure it fits right. But it's held on with uh, a rubber band just to keep it from falling off. So we take the rubber band off. And now we can move the, uh, we can move the table. Uh, the saddle down the slide away so we can work on installing the table. There, now that we have the saddle moved out to where we can get at it fairly easily, this is what's been new that's been added to the, uh, to the cross slide saddle this time. Uh, we've taken uh, the adapted the design from the X and Y uh, table and base from the mill and used it on the lathe to control backlash a little better on the cross slide. Includes a little star gear lock with a button head screw that locks it and a backlash nut that attaches, uh, that goes against the outside of the saddle. So that's what we're going to be, um, we're going to be adjusting here in a second. The backlash nut comes already installed um, on the saddle or on the lead screw and the button head screw is already attached to the back of the saddle. So all we have to do is take our smallest hex key that comes with it and while it's easy to get to here and the saddle's not installed yet, we'll just break it loose. Don't have to take it off, just loosen it up so that we can adjust it later. Now you'll, you'll um, align the uh, dovetails of the um, table over the saddle and push it on until the lead screw engages in the uh, hole where the slide screw insert is. And you can start turning the hand wheel while you're pushing this way and pick up the thread on the slide screw insert. And you can start installing the saddle here the table on the saddle. I'm just going to turn this now once we get it going. We'll get it on about, so it at least goes over the end of the saddle here. There we go. Now, we'll show a little detail, a little close-up detail of what it looks like underneath the saddle because it's very hard to see under here. 
uh, with a video camera while I'm doing it. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to thread that nut down against the side of the saddle and then we're going to tighten the lock on it. And uh, so that's what, that's what we're going to do now. Okay, the, the lock nut is against the side of the saddle and it's engaged with the teeth of the uh, lock, lock gear. Now I'm going to take the small hex key again and put it in the middle of that button head screw and I'm going to tighten it down so that it, the uh, added backlash nut now can't turn. Now what you can do now is check the backlash either with an indicator or you can, you can check it on the hand wheel by turning in one direction, stopping, looking where, it's, uh, where, where the number is, and then turning the other direction until you feel it start to pick up. I've only got about a thousandths of backlash in here, so I don't really need to adjust that any tighter. So I'm just going to run it up further onto the, onto the saddle. And the next thing we'll do here is we will um, and, and start putting together the motor and speed control. Now the motor and speed control are right here. We open the, open the box, take out the motor. The speed control is protected with bubble wrap. Take that off. This is all covered in the instruction manual that you, you came out with individual photos. It, it was one of the first things you took out of the box, but sometimes it's easier when you see somebody put one together. Okay, we're zoomed in a little closer now so you can see what, a little better what's going on. I've removed the headstock from the lathe by just by releasing the, uh, the set screw that holds it onto the pin. And lifted it off. I left the alignment key in the lathe. The uh, first thing we're going to do is remove the motor pulley, which is uh, packed on the motor. We're going to use the smallest hex key and remove the motor uh, from the pulley. And then we're going to place the inner belt guard over the, over the motor pulley. Align it so that the, the um, cable is pointing down and uh, then with the belt, there's several holes, so you want to get the belt guard level and, and thread the uh, threaded end of the uh, standoff into the threaded hole in the motor and it will register on the hole if, on, when you get it lined up it'll register on the hole of the inner belt guard and then you do the same with the other one with the threaded end thread it in get it aligned with the belt guard and then you can reinstall your motor pulley and you want to make sure that the flat on the motor shaft is lined up with the with the set screw and retighten it about where it was before. Alright with the pulley on next we're going to take and, and we're going to loop the uh, belt over the pulley either either uh, either side doesn't matter for right now put it over the pulley and hold it on take the other half of the belt guard and align it with the two uh, ends of the um, standoffs Take your long uh, screws and thread them through and put a nut on the back. There's a, there's a depression actually in the, in the back. You can push it into that and begin to tighten it. I'm going to do that with a screwdriver here in a minute. Same with, uh, with the other nut here. Put that into the hole that's sized for it at the bottom and run your screw through the bottom and tighten that with a screwdriver. Okay, next we're going to attach the speed control. The speed control has two ears on a tab that's sticking out on the back, two, two little round points, and there are two ears here with holes in them that, uh, that this pivots on. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip this down over the first pin between the 
There we go. Drop it into the hole. Then we're going to bend the other tab out a little with our finger and push down on this one until it locks in there. Now it's engaged and it pivots on there. The next item that you're going to attach will be the bracket, the motor bracket, and that's going to go into the two holes. We're using two, two uh, washers on each one. Let me put them on the screw first. Put two washers on each uh, screw. And these will go into the back end of the motor standoffs through the slots in the bracket. Just get those started. Now, it doesn't matter where they are for right now. We're going to adjust the tension on the belt with those in a minute. So let's just get those on, get them screwed down so that they're located. There we go. That's close enough. Now the next, next thing you're going to do, the two screws that attach the bracket to the headstock are in the headstock when it ships. So just unscrew those and take them out. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is hook up the uh, belt. So you want to, uh, for the regular position, you want to put the belt over the large diameter pulley on the motor and over the small diameter pulley on the headstock, the outer one. And so let's make sure that the, the uh, bracket is all the way out as far as it will go. That will allow you to get the pulley inside the belt guards and slip the, slip the belt over the pulley so that it's now out over the pulley. And the next and final step would be to put the two screws into the headstock and lock the, uh, lock the bracket onto this headstock. Okay, we're tightening up the screws now on the headstock. We've got that one tight. We'll finish tightening this one. Now the motor's bolted to the headstock. Headstock to adjust it. Right now, this motor can slide back and forth on there because we haven't tightened those two yet. Take and put your finger on the on the pulley uh, or on the back of the spindle here and push on the motor and just push it out. Put a little tension on the on the on the uh, belt. You don't need a whole lot. Uh, just so it doesn't slip, and then we'll tighten the two bolts that position the motor then, and that's what, that's what adjusts your, your uh, belt tension. Once those are tight, then the last step is to put the little lock in place with the nut down and toward the front. You just drop it into the slot here and slide it out forward. Put a um, washer on the remaining uh, screw, the socket head screw, get that lined up with the hole, and this is your hole down. To get to adjust the uh, belt in the future, if you want to change to the high torque position, you would release this, swing it back, and flip the belt to the other position. You'd loosen these bolts, move the motor in, take tension off the belt, move it to the other position, and then just retighten it. And that puts this back on there. And that is it. Now you've got the headstock motor and speed control ready to put onto the lathe. Okay, now we're in back in position here to just about finish it up. I just placed it back on the board. And the alignment key, when I took the headstock off, the alignment key was remained in the lathe. And there's a slot here. There's a ground side to the alignment key and an unground side. You want to make sure the ground sides go down into the slot sideways. So we push that back down. It is a tight fit. It's supposed to be. Push that down into the slot. There's an alignment slot on the bottom. We set this over the pin. That aligns with the key. If you want to turn tapers, you take that alignment key out, and then you can move the headstock. Take our largest 5/32 hex key then, and we'll tighten the tapered set screw into the groove on that pin, and that will pull the headstock down onto the pin. It is supposed to be loose. Uh, it's the alignment key that does the aligning, not the pin. The pin just pulls it down. So now your headstock is aligned. Next, just about last, we've got a tool post that came in a bag with your accessories. It's a rocker tool post, so you just release the two screws and set the rocker in the curve. You can take our cutting tool that came with it and set it in there. Don't have it sticking out any more than you need to. For now, we're just going to fasten this in here. We're going to um, there's instructions in the instruction manual on how to adjust the tool height. But for now, we'll just put it in there, get it as level as you can, just by eye, 
and loosen up the middle screw so that the uh, T-nut sticks down fairly far. And then we'll just align that into the slot in the table and then bring it up by hand. Remember when you're tightening things on the lathe, you don't need to overdo it. A couple fingers is all you need. Uh, it's easy to pull the T-slots up and ruin them. So you don't have to crank on the long end of the lever. Just so it can't move, you know it's in there strong enough. Now, what came with it, you have a face plate that's, that's threaded onto the 3 quarter 16 thread. You have a drive dog that's made to hold material. You can attach material in here, long material, and then use the, the pin on the drive dog and the center, uh, the dead center here, to locate the stock, the pin to drive it. When the headstock turns, this will drive the stock, and a dead center in the tail stock to locate it at the other end. Now, of course, you'll have to have center drilled the pieces first. But uh, those are the parts that come with your, uh, with your uh, lathe, including the three hex keys, a Tommy bar for, for tightening the chucks. And again, just a, a tip uh, with the dead center pressed in here, to eject a chuck or a dead center from the tailstock, you just back it off all the way until it pops it out. And it pops it out of the taper. So that's pretty much putting the lathe together. It's very simple. Now, uh, it's up to you to go make something with it. Before I forget, there is one other part that we've started including uh, recently with lathes and mills. Um, it's a little uh, driver for the, uh, removing the gibbs. Rather than using a screwdriver, if you need to remove a gib, they're tapered and they're pressed in. They can get in there pretty tight. So rather than use a screwdriver or something metal to get in there and pound on it, um, you could do some damage to your machine. So we've included this little, it's actually just a sprue from our gib molding uh, process, but it's got a nice flat end on it. You can put it up against the end of the, uh, the gib. Once the lock has released, the, the set screw that holds the gib lock, you can just give it a tap and then the plastic won't do any damage to your gibs. Um, that's it, that should be in the parts with your, um, with your other pieces and parts in the little box. Well, that's about it. Uh, the machine is together now. Now it's time to go out and get some material, chuck it up in there, and uh, start making some parts and have some fun.